Okay guys, welcome to platform management version one. Meaning there will be a second one follow up, but maybe they won't be there, right? Anyway, so today we will be covering four things within our module. Um, one, you will learn how to ensure a pleasant and easy experience for your customers. Uh, two, getting your branding down. Three, managing comms. And four, um, boosting and promotion. When, where, how, how to do it, who to do it to. So, starting off, it is ensuring a pleasant and easy experience for your customers. I find that the most simple thing that you should concentrate on is the little things. So having the details down. So, um, so just very obviously opening and closing hours, your location, your phone number, your shop location, like your shop, you have the prices correctly, your profile and cover photo, they're not pixelated, they're high resolution. You know, you have a featured photo section and then you have the proper featured photos. If you have a, a new update, a new promotion, a new everything, make sure everything's updated. And again, photo resolution. I know these seem like very simple things that you would think off the top of your head, but really a lot, not a lot of people do that. And we do need to make sure that for all the brands that we're covering, we have just the basics down. Why? Because first impressions matter. So, you know, people always say, oh no, get to know each other. But no, really, the first thing you see is always how you feel about it, right? So why it matters, if you have all of your basics down, it shows that you care. So you care about the brand, you care about what you're selling. So in turn, it shows that you will care about them, the customer. So that inspires trust in your brand and your shop. And then also they have confidence that you'll take care of them because you're taking care of your page, you're taking care of your web page, you're making sure that your phone number is correct that they can get into contact with you. So then they're confident that, hey, I can shop with this brand and they won't screw me over. And obviously a better customer experience. Because you know when you're trying to call someone and then it's like, oh, wrong phone number, or you're trying to go to a shop and the location is wrong, and you're like, oh, I don't want to go here anymore. That they didn't, they didn't even have their location correctly. How can I trust them to give me good service? Our first example, I need to launch a poll. So these two shops, this is just their about section. Which one would you rather buy from and why? So it is this one that you would not buy from, right? One, because this is a repeat, right? You see that they didn't take care to fix this up, this small detail. And then two, they're always open. So they're open 24 seven. So they should have opening hours, right? Mm -hmm. And then you were right about the website. So you see that they have an official website. And that's why we keep pushing for clients to always have websites for their brands. And that's one of our packages. Because when you have a website, you know, you look more solid. You look more like, oh, that guy's got their sh stuff together. And the second detail, this is more obvious than the last one, but which one would you rather buy from? The left one, right? Because this is this shows all their products. It's all, I know that the pictures are from Apple, but they have all their prices. So you know that this, this is updated. You can trust that when you go to the shop, what you see here will be what you see also in the shop. Whereas this one, it's like, oh, all products and you just have this one, right? So details, 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 details. Always, but uh, just a side note, that also goes into all of your other work as well, right? Not just brand management. Secondly, consistency is key. So consistency, 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 and that's across all boards. So that's in your visuals, that's in your messaging, that's in your tone, that's in your personality. So some things that you should be asking yourself when you're managing your platform or when you're creating content is what your brand colors are and how does that come across in social media? So for example, in the giving tree, that's why we're pushing it so much to have the petal shape and the, the specific six, five, six colors of the brand and also the fonts. What's the photography style? So when you pick a style, you stick with it. You don't go, you don't mishmash everywhere, right? Because then it just looks like you don't have, you don't have a direction, you don't have a purpose. And then how you showcase your products as well. Are you putting them against the white background? Are you putting them in a natural background? Are people holding it? Are you focusing on the product? Are you focusing on the shop? You know, also what's your art style and your social media templates? Is it blocked? Is it squirrely? Um, another, another example in the giving tree was um, when we had those circle blobs. So do we use those circle blobs, but those are out of the brand guidelines. So we should be using the petals instead, right? So always focus on your brand. And again, why? Because it builds trust, confidence, and a good brand image because when you are consistent, people feel like, hey, again, they've got their stuff together. They know what they're doing. I trust them. Another example, who would you feel comfortable buying from? I really love Cactus Cambodia. I really love them, but, um, but why? Why, why? Why would you rather buy from this? Um, consistency. 
color consistency. Okay. Yeah. So this page has this random monk there as well. What else? Was your product display? Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. A little bit more appealing. What what about it is appealing? And so see, so they have their fonts, they have their brand fonts. This is this is what you on Photoshop like big one cool one, right? This one. And the logo is an S and an N, so it's like okay bro, but like you know? So consistency across what? Brand identity, brand image, and brand personality. So um do you know the difference between brand identity, image, and personality? Okay, so um, what we're focusing on today is brand identity and brand personality. For part two will be brand image, and that goes more into the analytics of it. So brand identity is how you present yourself to the public. Brand image is how, other, is how your audience sees you, which is why it's important in analytics. And brand personality is your messaging, your tone, your voice, how, like, like how you present. But identity is the visuals, and personality is in the messaging. That's the difference. So brand identity, color, design, logo, and typeface. These four things are always the four that we focus on. So um, I don't want to use TGT again. So in Sylving, we have the brown color palette, specifically that brown color palette. Design, we have the mascot. And also, we tend to go with just text overlay. The logo, which has to be consistent in sizing and color. Typeface, we use Mont Serif, but that font, right? Always, all the time. So why is it so important? When I show you this color palette, who do you think of? Google. 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 Google, right? So, okay, maybe the next one is more obvious. When I show you this imaging, who do you think of? Apple. Apple. When I show you this, just swoosh. <laughs> Nike, right? And this typeface, Coca-Cola. So immediately when you see these things, because it's so embedded into your brain, you immediately see like, ah, that's them. You don't have to see any brand. You don't have to see any logo. You just see the elements of it and you immediately connect it, right? That's the impact of consistency. So why is brand consistency so important? Well, like I mentioned, it's the face of your company, right? It's who you're showing to everyone. It's the face of your company. It's what you're showing to everyone. And so as long as you're keeping it consistent, then you build credibility and trust. So for example, imagine a shop. So you see all the time, right? On Facebook, you have those happy my store, C store, Liba store, right? So those are general stores. Do they have a brand? No, they have a name on Facebook, which they change all the time. And all their photos are from Taobao. Do you feel like you can trust that supplier? Like sure, you can buy one or two products, but then you don't resonate with it, right? Versus a niche store, which is a specialized store. So for example, Nordic Home, which is, a, which is a similar store. They have also products from China, but the thing is they curate their, their products. They're not just putting everything all around. They have a certain specific brand. They have social media templates. I should have put an example, but you can see that it's, it's very different. When you, even though they're both from Pao Pao, one is all over the place and you feel, oh no, what is that? But then one is just obviously just so much nicer and they're the same product but you just want to buy from the other one more because you have credibility and trust. And credibil credibility and trust builds advertising impressions. So fun fact, it takes people at least seven times seeing it, they have to see an ad seven times before they decide to buy a product. So that's why you see sponsored ads so much. They always show the same pictures. And if not the same pictures, they're showing at least similar pictures or the same product, a similar setting, a similar kind of photography style, because then it's just, Hello, 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 always in your brain, you know? And advertising impressions, then you, people know your company's mission. They get to know you better. They get to know what you're all about. They want to know what your story is. They know what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe not so much. Maybe you're just trying to sell a product, but at least they know that this is what you're selling. You're not just selling some random food or some random kitchen appliances. You have Scandinavian furniture, you know? And so then that way you can easily generate new customers while also delighting old ones. So the new customers, they come over and they see, wow, this, this is great, thanks. And then the old ones are like, I, this brand is being consistent. They're not changing, so I can keep following this brand. And I, you know how you unlike pages because they suddenly start giving out weird content and you're like, what is this, who is this, who are you? And then you unlike, right? 
So that's why consistency matters. So people don't unlike, and people keep following you and your story. And this is a great quote that I found. A good product generates customers. A good brand generates advocates. So again, what that means is just, if you have a great product and you're just spamming it all over people's news feeds, sure, people are gonna buy it, but will they remember your name? Will they come back to your store for another product? No, that's it. But how? Okay, brand consistency and in visuals and messaging. So if you look at the marketing funnel, you can see how that kind of comes together, right? With the previous, it's the face of your company. So that's you making yourself aware, people making yourself present, making people become aware of you. Credibility and trust. So when you're consistent and you're, you're giving the same visuals, same messaging, that's when people are considering you. And then when you have enough advertising impressions, at least seven, then people are gonna buy from you. And then people understand your company's mission. So that means they become loyal to you. And then when they're loyal to you, you can, and you keep being consistent, then other customers see how great you're doing, but also your old ones are still loving you. So they start to advocate for your brand. They're like, this guy is great because of these reasons. And I love them so much. And you're gonna just word of mouth or sharing. And that's how organic growth happens. So a great example is Brown. They have amazing visuals all the time. So it doesn't have to be the same setup. It doesn't have to be like all stock, stock white photos or all photos of them in a cafe. <clears throat> what do you think makes these visuals appealing? The color, the tone. Each store has a certain design. So not just, so on their social media and offline, they're just a very great brand. And if you notice also, you can always see their logo consistently here. So their cup is face here, these are all face forwards. Coffee beans are a great thing. And it's just a chill, gray, muted tone. And then another great visual is koi. So you see here again, it's the colors. Even though they've gone here like this, they're keeping the logo in this panel. They're keeping their text here. They're keeping their products in a certain positioning. And also their logo is always visible as well. So again, it's repetition, 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 right? And important to note is that one post should be one message. So if you're trying to say it's promotion, but also you get this, but also you get this, all that information gets lost because people are only gonna concentrate on you for like three seconds. So if your immediate message doesn't come across like that, people are just gonna scroll past you in their newsfeed. So either your visuals, but most of your visuals have to capture their attention and then other details can come in the content but it has to be just one message per post. So for example, you're trying to advertise this one. If you buy five, so across all these posts, it's just that message. If you get five drinks, you get one, five drinks, get one. Even though this is, maybe they're trying to advertise a new kind of tea. If you also say free this new tea as well, they won't forget that. I mean, they will forget that because you're trying to advertise two things at the same time. And brand personality, that is your tone and your voice and your messaging. So how, how you interact with your customers basically on all platforms. So social media or uh, on your website if you have one, also on your phone if people are calling in. So again, I wanna use the example of Koi. So one thing that you should always know is personalizing your interactions. So they do such a great job. It's not just, you don't feel like it's just copy paste answers, right? Because some shops are like, how much well? And then they give this whole giant block of text. And you're like, am I talking to a robot? You know? Or, or they give you just $3. And that doesn't make you feel good. You know? You're, I'm trying to buy your product. And it's like, I feel like I'm from you or something. But if you look, if you look here, they're personalizing the messages. So it's specifically to that person. It's not just a generic, nice, great kind of message, right? It's to that person. And these are the same. And they're quirky and you get and you get the same feeling. free, admin ban, haha. You know, screenshot toksan. So they've got this like quirky, cute kind of personality going for them that they've been keeping consistent and they're always interacting with every single one of their customers. You see like the Rock Roy comments, every single one of them has a reply from Koi. So how you should be doing this. You're talking to everyone, right? Replying to all comments, messages, platforms. You're taking time to craft personalized messages and you're keeping your brand voice. And basically 
you let them know that they're talking to a human being, right? Because it always feels better. So then, because that way they feel engaged. They feel engaged with your brand. They feel engaged with you. They feel more valued as a customer. Like, wow, they took the time to talk to me. And then when new customers see this, they're also like, hey, this is great. Like this brand is great. I wanna be friends with this brand. I wanna be a top fan of this brand. And your customers stay loyal to you because you're treating them well. And like uh, we were talking about Food Panda and their, and their chat agents, we, don't, we still don't know if they're bots or humans because the way they talk is so uh, straightforward. Something like that. So you don't feel like you're being helped. So that's also why people prefer phone calls here, right? Because they feel like they're talking to a human. They feel like they can be helped immediately, not just a bot and going through algorithms, right? So you just really have to appeal to the human side. And tone is also important. So we saw with Koi that they were very quirky, that they were very fun. But that only works for certain brands, right? For other brands that are, for example, this is Hiruskar. It's a pharmaceutical brand. So their tone has, has to obviously be different from Koi. They can't use that same quirky style. They can still be human, but they just have a level of professional because they're giving information. Maybe customers are asking for specific, um, specific medical needs, so they have to give accurate and professional information. But again, so today, Hiruskar actually cut the toy from home and look in the box that's not the and mine. Like, even though it's professional, it still sounds like a human. And just like Bong Akram with the pop saying, again, it's professional, but human. Thirdly, is to tell your story. So that doesn't mean you sit down with them and like tell them your story, but that comes across in your visuals and your comments and your, the content that you put out, right? So this is a very, one of my favorite cafes in Bugs Now. Maybe you know it, I think. So looking at this, what do you think their story is? What do you think their mission is? What do you think their focus is? Is it like a lifestyle brand? Is it a coffee focused brand? Is it just, just a random place that just sells coffee? You know? So there's a lot of focus you see on making the coffee, on the artistry, artist, artistry of coffee on the beans, on the product itself. It's a very chill mood, chill day. And you see here, we can't just learn it. The only way to pour it perfectly is by doing it. Coffee moi accompanied by the rain. What else could we ask for? The whole process from bean to cup. How far would you go to make sure that beautiful coffee comes out right? Coffee or books? Of course it's both. So you kind of feel, do you, you feel what they're trying to get at? What their focus is? Yes? Yeah. What do you think their focus is? customer experience, quality of coffee, right? So you see that they care. But also this brand was started by this um, barista. So he used to be selling, he used to sell on a coffee cart and then just selling just, you know, the available to come out, right? But then uh, one day a customer asked him, so what makes a good coffee? And then he, he, he was like, huh, I don't know. And then he went on this whole like self-defining journey where he was learning how to make coffee. He went to intern at this amazing coffee store in Sibiria. You know, he spent four years and then now he's the number one barista in Cambodia. So his focus is always on the coffee, like how, how to make coffee properly. So you can see, can you see that coming across in all their content and visuals, right? So telling your story. So then it makes people resonate with you, care about you. Right, okay. So people get to know you as a brand better when you tell your story. They know your values. So when people get to know you better, they're more familiar with you, right? So it's like when you say, where do you want to eat? And then you never really go for a new place. You always go to the places that are more familiar to you, right? So if the, if the places that are advertising, you don't even have to step foot in it. But if they feel like a friend, you want to go and try it out, right? Rather than an impersonal message. And then when you tell your story, your values, your brand's values become their values. So when you're trying to sell so much how, how coffee is great, how you have to really concentrate on the art of making coffee, your customers will also feel like, hey, I have to care about my coffee. I can't just go and buy like 3,000 real coffee anymore. I, it has to be artistry. It has to be coming from these like specifically roasted beans and everything, you know? And then your story resonates with them. And then they begin to advocate for you because there's, they're like, this is such a great place, guys. They really care about their coffee beans. So then they begin telling their friends and then you get more customers, yay. And that means that your mission 
is accomplished, right? Getting people to know you and come in and get your product and stay and invite the fans. So that is the end of our branding. And then, so the last part of this is just boosting. So we've covered just the basics, content, and now is boosting, right? So it's step-by-step, step. you create a page, you get it. Okay, boost or not to boost. So here we have all the types of boosting, which I've, I'm sure you've seen. We have boosting a post, messages, and promote your page. We don't use this as much because people here, Cambodia is a unique market. People don't really use websites here. They trust Facebook more. So Facebook is the Google, right? So people don't really have websites, but it's always good for Western customers to see. And then getting more leads, which is just like filling in a form. So we don't use those. These are the top three that we're going to be using, not exclusively, but the most here at least. So boosting a page is how we usually start. So this is us trying to reach a new audience. So for your ad creatives, you have to, because this is the first time that customers are going to be hearing about you. This is the first time they're getting to know you. So you have to make sure that the ad creative is eye catching and it's going to, again, stop them in their tracks of their con continuous scrolling on their phone. Right. And then also because it's their first time meeting you, you want to make sure that all the information that is relevant for that promotion is there so that they don't have to go the extra length of going into your page, scrolling into your about page, finding more information about you. You want everything to be there for them so that they can just easily make a decision like, yeah, I want that. Like, yeah, that's close to my house. I can go there on the weekends, but then you have to keep repeating it. For your audience, so for Soling specifically, I have lookalikes and the optimal number is 9%. 9% look alike to your people that already like the solving page. So Facebook is going to automatically find people that, that like the same things, that have the same behaviors as the people who are already interacting and engaging with your page. So then you can get more people who, who will be also interacting and engaging with your page and like your product. So it's not just random people who you don't care about or they, that don't care about you, right? You want people to care about the brand. And then, another, and then I always do two audiences. So one is the people who look like the people who already like your page. And one is an entirely new audience where you're trying to capture more people who like things like eating, coffee houses, desserts, but also look like your page. So these are the two audiences that you should be focusing on when you do page likes. So look likes and new audiences. And then for, for, for performance, cost per like. So as you see here, the reach is 1500 with 400. 42 likes and a 0 0.08 cost per like. So I find that the optimal number is always under one cent. Anything higher than that and your ad is not performing well and you need to change your strategy. And then again, you're doing this one ad and you're running it for seven days. And then if you, again, so you want people to keep seeing it, right? So you just keep running this ad and then people are just gonna keep seeing it and buying it. But that doesn't work for the page likes because this is, well, if they've already liked your page, like. Like you don't need to show it to them again because they're already, they're, they've already connected with you. But again, if you see that this is working with these people, then you continue running this ad because, well, this ad is obviously working. I'll keep using this ad to get more people, right? Second is boosting a post. And this is to capture new and existing audiences. So again, um, in more information, the better. Uh, for this one, this worked well because here you have to, so existing audiences. So people who already like your page because maybe they don't see your post as frequently. So you have to make sure that they see your page. Like what's the point of them liking you if they're not gonna see your posts, right? So you boost it to people who already like your page and then you boost it to the other people who haven't liked your page, but are look alike. So this is the same audience from last time as well. The people who like eating coffee houses, desserts, chocolate pastry, and their lookalikes, right? And again, uh, this 0 0.01, that's great. Keep it below 0 0.1, basically, all the time. And um, so why do you think this worked well? Why do you think we were able to get 504 people like it? And then, sorry, one thing. Even if you have a lot of likes, likes don't really count that much, right? Because people aren't really engaging with it. They're just like, oh, that's cool, boop, like. What really matters are the comments and shares. So you want people to be engaging with your content and you want people to be sharing. So when they're engaging, they think it's cool. And when they share it, they think it's so cool that their friends have to see it as well. So why do you think this worked? By the way, this is a new product that they came out with. The food looked good. Great. The colors catching their eye. 
Um, it's a, so this one, because there are so many visuals, so this had nine photos. I like to keep a balance always. If there is just one big visual, you have a lot of information in the content. If there's a lot of visuals, you just have a very short and sweet content, right? So then people are like, okay, and then they get time to scroll because people like to scroll through the photos. They like to see their options. Especially also, if you think it works for you, then you should add the price as well. If that's the main selling point, you should keep your main selling point visible. So for this mini sold thing, it was geared towards people who didn't like the high price tag of the larger original solding. So then pricing was a huge deal here. So we wanted to keep, we wanted to let everyone know that, hey, this is only 450 guys. This is only 490. So it's not obvious, but it's there. So people notice it. And then people just share, 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 talk here. And then organic growth. And then again, here is just another example of the same thing. You got short and sweet. You've got, then this was for um, COVID. We wanted to boost delivery. We wanted people to deliver to the house, to let people know that, hey, you guys can order. So all the information is here. Keep scrolling to see solving step by step. And again, I don't know, emojis and hashtags, they seem cute. Um, and then you just have all the information. The visuals, if I do say myself, are beautiful. Um, and then you can see it step by step how a solving is made. So just with these like nice photos, you really catch people's attention and they want to see more. And then they go back and they say, oh, I can get it as well. Okay, great for me. And then they share it to their friends, right? $10 over five days. So you can see how organic growth really works with sharing. So you, the aim is always to get people to share is best, I feel, personally. So when you go into the messages, uh, go into boosting posts, there's two, there's two goals. One is for reach. So this was all boosting for reach, getting as many people to see it as possible. And then there's another one that's messages, but that one is um, more expensive because that one is very directed. It's, it's more for a niche audience. It's when you're looking for a very specific thing or, sp or having people to specifically do something for you. So for example, just good, you would use the messaging target because you want people, you only want to attract the people who would respond and fill in your form. You only want the people who will care about this product and repo station and then want to be a part of the beta testing, for example. That's how we would boost it if we were looking for beta testers. And another example is um, real estate. So if you want, if you have a specific um, promotion going on where you want people to book or sign in at, for this date, Jumben, for example, that's also messaging because one, it helps you immediately connect with the customer and then they're like, I want to book this room. And again, it's just for very specific people who want to do very specific things. So then your targeting is narrowed and you don't spend as much money, as much unnecessary money. And that's it for today. I hope you learned something. Questions? Um, so everyone's clear. I hope you all learned a little bit from this and I hope you have a great time managing platforms of your own some, sometime later. Thank you.